Welcome back to ASMR Pillow Talk. I am the weird ingrown hair that you're too embarrassed to show all your friends, Chris. And I'm Ange. And today it is Storytime Saturday. Uh, so every Saturday we're going to have story time. Uh, but this is the first one. And I think you'll notice pretty quickly, if you stay tuned, that uh, we've had some pretty interesting stories between the two of us together. So uh, it's going to get interesting. Would you agree, Angie? Absolutely. All right. So we're going to be talking about today, Angie. We're going to be talking about our experiences at Pride Festivals and Pride Parades. In celebration of Pride Month, Pride Month. Uh, which is all month long. So all month we're going to try and bring you some LGBT-related content in celebration of Pride. But I don't think we have 30 days worth, so... No, we don't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just going to be thrown in there when we can. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. So uh, we've been together for 12 years, and over that time we've been to a few festivals in... Florida, yes. and we also went to New York City Gay Pride twice, twice. which is crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, so I think it's I think it's a safe bet that we should probably start with Florida since that was yeah the, the calmer of the two, and then yeah. we'll, we'll work our way up to New York. And you do not want to miss what the heck happened in New York. Yeah. So uh, in Florida, we used to go to Pride Fest every year. Uh, so we're going to share some highlights with you. So we're the type where when we go to Pride, we we bling it out in rainbows. Yeah. We make a we make an activity out of it. Uh, we bring the whole posse. Uh, yeah. Rainbow everything. Uh, do you remember that shirt we made for Gage, our yes. older son? Yes. <clears throat> what did it say? Didn't it say I love my bi dad or something? Yes. But it was like fluorescent yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And we painted right on it in black. I art my bi dad. And uh, there was this one photo that we got him where he was waving this little uh, flag, and uh, it was really cool. But we actually had a convertible back then, so we had like we couldn't find yeah. a rainbow flag, so we got rainbow material that we were hanging off it. Yeah. And then we had rainbows. I mean, everywhere, all over the stroller, everywhere. So, uh, so uh, my favorite year was definitely the one where there was Beverly McClellan, uh, who was a singer on The Voice. Uh, so she was a lesbian. She had the shaved head. She unfortunately did pass away of uh, cancer. Um, but she was there, and we were watching The Voice, actually, that year. And she was definitely, like, the best. She was Team Christina. Yes. Yep, she's yeah. Team Christina. And uh, so she was there, and that was fantastic. Um, and uh, so that was really good to see her while she was still with us. Yeah. Um, the highlight that year. That was the same year, though. Or was that a different year? I'm not sure. You know what I'm talking about, the highlight? Yes. What was it? Latrice Royale. Yes. Latrice Mother Eppin Royale was at our Pride Fest. Yes. Now, the Pride Fest we're talking about is actually Treasure Coast Pride um, in Florida. And coincidentally, that's the area that Latrice is from. So okay. it was the year of her season. In fact, the season hadn't, hadn't even ended yet. And Latrice came. And uh, so, you know, it was kind of like her going back to her hometown. So it was a pretty big deal. So listen, I am like front row. Yeah. And I'm right on the stage. And she kissed me. But she didn't just kiss me. She bit a $100 bill out of my mouth then kissed me on my forehead, and then kissed me on my lips, and it's on video. I'll try and post the link below. It was somebody else's that caught it on YouTube, yeah. and I, I just happened to find it later on when I was looking it up. Let me tell you, Latrice Royale puts on a show. No, I want you to talk. Like, you need to start talking more. So let me tell you right now, Latrice Royale puts on a show. Oh yeah, she was very entertaining. Back and forth all over the stage, and definitely very energetic. Getting the, getting the audience way involved. And she's a big girl, and she was yeah. dropping splits. Oh yeah, she was. She was a lot of fun. It was awesome. Um, and then we went to the the club, our local club there afterwards. Yeah. And um. And I think you went that night though. I didn't. Know. She was home with the baby. <laughs> uh, but I went, yes. And she remembered me from the hundred dollar bill. I think you remember that. How could you not? I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> right. I mean, hundred bucks, and we kissed. So. Yeah. So she actually um. She, when she saw me, she was she was signing for everybody, and she had different pictures of herself she was autographing. 
and she was like, you. She's like, come here. She's like, pick out anyone you want, and you're not paying for it. So I got a picture with her, and I actually still have it signed somewhere in one of my boxes. Uh, but that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not everybody was awesome. Oh, boy. Miss Roxy Andrews, that means you. So listen, I get it. You need to get your tips but she literally just walked back and forth did not dance did not move did not drop a, a, no. D- no death drop no nothing not a single thing because and then on top of that what did she do went to the club and she didn't even perform i heard a rumor i don't state this is true but i heard a rumor that they didn't offer her enough so she basically just went to the club and didn't do a thing and just like was one of the audience and it's like latrice put on a show and the local queens put on a show but she was very stuck up keep in mind this is the year of her season so she thought she was hot beep and did nothing the whole time like so impersonable so stuck up so listen I know she's, like, really good friends with some of my favorite queens, like Detox, but I don't care. Lame. 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 So I hope that she's changed since then. I don't claim that she's like that now, but she was definitely like that then. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know if you guys have been to any Pride Fest, but it's more than just a show. What's your favorite part? Oh, gosh, I mean, I think, um, I really enjoy everybody coming together in support of each other, and... Even those who are not, you know, part of the LGBT, you know, T community, um, those who are just in support of their friends and family who are, you know, they all come together. It's like one big family and yes. we just have so much fun. I mean, there's music and everyone's, you know, there's dancing and just hanging out, performances, you know, um, food trucks, vendors, things like that. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, and it's really cool seeing which local companies support the LGBT yeah. community. Yeah. Because then you know where to shop later. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But it was a lot of fun. I mean, the, like, the place, honestly, was crawling with kids. Yeah. Um, to a lot of families, a lot yes. of kids just, like, dancing around and having fun. And, yes. You know, so it's it's really it's really encouraging and, and nice to see all that. And, you know, a lot of people might think that that's not the place for kids Shut the heck up. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Pride, I, you have to be careful. Certain areas of some Pride Fest, you, there can be some adult activity yes. going on. So you have to just look up ahead and know where you're walking. But there, there's none of that. No. It's not like New York City Pride, which we'll get to. But there, there's none of that. Um, it, the ton of kids, they're all j- dancing on the stage, interacting with the drag queens. Yeah. There was water fountain things that pop up from yes. the ground. It was really cool. Yeah. 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 There was actually, I remember... Uh, one of them, there was like all the kids, like a bunch of kids got to go up on stage and dance. And um, there was a couple there. I think it was a lesbian couple. And they had like three or four kids like between yeah. them two, like the two. like. And it was nice to see that they have like a nice little family like that. And, you know, it's just, it just brings everybody together. It's heartwarming. Yeah. You know what I think is cool about that? Was seeing all the people that usually seem like a club right. where it's dark and the show lights going on and they're like drunk and stuff. I mean, not that we were all weren't drunk because Pride Fest is time to party and celebrate, yeah. but getting to see them in the daylight and like outside yeah. <laughs> during the day, it's really cool. In like, a different oh, atmosphere, yeah. a different setting, and everything. Yeah. And, like, oh, that's what you look like when you're not drunk in a club. <laughs> and that's what you look like in your day clothes, you know? Yeah. Um, or. If you're me, not your day clothes, your breakfast clothes. Yeah. Because I <laughs> rainbow out, rainbow bandana, rainbow belt, rainbow laces. We go rainbowed out. We had like a rainbow, like bandana blanket type thing. We bought fabric and we yeah. wrapped it around Gage on the stroller. Yeah. So yeah. And and rainbow uh, ribbon. We yes. had like looped around all the bars. Yeah. That was cool. Um, I'm trying to think who was at some of the other Pride Fest down there. Oh, and they had like um, the Gay Men's Choir from our local area. So yeah, in Florida, it was really about the family reunion. We knew a lot of people there. So you're just walking around seeing everybody the whole time. Very different than New York City Pride. Yes. Very yes, different. Yes, yes. Okay. New York City Pride. How would you de- yes. how would you describe it in three words? Oh my goodness. It's a lot. It's, it's very, it can be very overwhelming. Um, a lot of action going on, a lot of just everything, you know, there's so much to see and there's so much going on that, you know, it's 
hard to take it all in, basically. Uh, it wasn't that hard for me. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. Uh, oh my goodness. So, the first year that we ended up going to Pride is when we had first gotten together. So, I believe it was, maybe it was like 2007 was our first Pride in June. Um, we went to New York City and saw the parade. Um, and I remember you bought me my outfit for it. Yes, yes. that green. It was a green little cut shirt <laughs> with, uh, like the silver and white lines and black yes. lines. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was it was my first time to anything like that, so I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, like it was kind of overwhelming, you know. But it was it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. She was very sheltered. I was, yes. So going there and like, I mean, you have your leather bears, and you have your uh, clear kids, and it was just there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness! Remember who I saw? Mandalore. I saw a Mandalore. I remember you talking about it too, like the whole way down there. You were like, I hope I see my man Lepore and like freaking out over it. And who does he see up on the float going by? Amanda Lepore. Yes. And listen, I, I'm i not like an Amanda Lepore fan. Like, oh, I saw her on Instagram. Amanda Lepore is one of the most infamous transsexuals in the world. She goes all the way back at the New York City uh, club scene and the party, mon- party monster, Michael Alec, James St. James, the whole thing. Um, Suzanne Barsh, all of it. Like, she was she was on the talk shows when all the club kids were on the talk shows back in the day. Uh, so she is a gay icon in the LGBT scene. And uh, she also has a song that I was obsessed with I called, uh, I don't know much about clothes, but my hair looks fierce. I mean, I could do the whole thing for you right now. Like, I don't know much about clothes, but my hair looks fierce. I don't know much about much I could go on forever. But listen, so I was really excited to see her. So we're just hanging out. Right, and I'm like, we were new together, so it was like, I felt all cool, like, oh, yay, finally I have a freaking girlfriend, you know what I mean? And so I was just kind of distracted, and all of a sudden, people are like, I'm in teleport, I'm in teleport. Yeah. So I freak out, and I'm like, Amanda, oh my god, Amanda, I love you, and she like waves, and I'm like, that can't be it. Like, the float goes by, it goes, turns around the corner, it starts to go to turn around the corner. I'm like, no, that's not enough. So I dart, I run around the corner, like, around the building onto the other side, so that when it comes around the corner, I'm there again. <laughs> so now I'm, like, the psycho person screaming from the sidewalk. And I'm like, I'm Anna. I'm like, I love you. I love you so much. And she's legit, like... I'm guy, surprised you didn't, like, chase her down the way, like, and just follow the float all the way down. Just so you guys know, it's very late. If you're on the Yeah, it is very late. The whole point of this show is you guys are supposed to be like hanging out with us before bed, like we're in a summer party together. So I hope the yawns are cueing some in you. <laughs> night. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, she, so she, I was like, Amanda, I, and she locked eyes and I was like, I love you. She's like, oh, I love you too. And it was just, it was amazing. Um, but she was like 20 feet up on this freaking float. Oh, yeah, there was a lot of them up there. There was like a lot was, of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, for them. Yeah. Oh. You know who else we saw that year was Anthony Weiner. Oh yeah, that I remember politician. That. So you guys know Anthony Weiner with like the scandal where he was sending pics to like people, and I think maybe somebody underage. I don't remember. Well, before he was like famous for all that, he was still <clears throat> um, running for whatever form of office he was going for. So this huge group of people comes up, and they all have like signs that say Weiner. And I'm like, I mean, I get it. This is a pride parade, but y'all right. really love some wiener. Yeah, right. Like, y'all are supporting that wiener <laughs> right now. Well, he gets, all of a sudden, like, because they're all walking, all of a sudden they stop. And he goes on, like, a megaphone or a microphone, but I think it was a megaphone. He's like, hello, everyone. My name is Wiener. And everybody starts freaking out and screaming because, like, he said wiener. Like, okay, listen, who wants to grow up? Let us enjoy our immaturity. Half the people are drunk, and half the people there loved Wiener. So um, everybody's freaking out, but it was cool because, like, you would walk, like, 50 feet or whatever and then do the same thing again. I mean, at least he picked a good time to promote it. <laughs> yeah, smart. That's like going to, like, a BBW party and yelling, my name is Cupcake, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Cupcakes! Um, BBW means big, beautiful woman, which, oh my we're going to do a story time one day about BBW because I used to go to BBW parties too. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so that was, that was definitely the highlight of that bride parade for sure. Oh yeah. Um, 
and that's the year we saw there's an infamous uh, man in the LGBT scene of New York City and he has like a huge rainbow beard and he has shaved head huge rainbow beard and he has a parrot and a dog and he dyes the dog all these rainbow colors and if any of you go to New York City Pride or if you're in New York City LGBT scene or any of that you know exactly who I'm talking about but if you google like rainbow pride fest uh, parrot dog it'll come right up but it was either him or his dog or his parrot that like passed away in the past few years and it was like it was in the LGBT news because he is kind of like his own little type of New York City icon you know right. like like naked cowboy like yes yeah. yes except he's kind of like a Times Square thing yeah this guy is like an L- as like a gay pride thing right so yeah. he's probably in like Greenwich Village or something oh yeah yeah, I'd imagine some, some form of Manhattan, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So, we should probably get to the main event. Yes. What you all really came here for. You guys want a story? Well, have I got a story for you? <laughs> so. I think it was like 2010. It was a couple, maybe 2011. It yeah. Was a, it was a couple years later. Yeah. So, um, where were we? We were living in Florida at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we were living in Florida by now, and we drove all the way up pretty much for Pride Fest. You know, oh, we can visit our family and friends, but we timed it for Pride Fest because we wanted to go again because it was that fun the first time. So uh, we, uh, she was driving. We had our car full of friends. We had SUVs full of friends. I'm lying in the trunk, like the back back of the SUV where it's like a flatbed type thing. So I'm lying down so that we won't get pulled over. And I have a cooler. And I am making drinks the whole ride there, which is like an hour. How did we even make it past the tolls without you being seen? I was ducked <laughs> down. I was. Well, I th- we also had like tinted windows, I think, too, in our, in our car. We did. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm literally, it's so squeezed back there that I'm like wrapped around this cooler. Like I am, <laughs> I'm spooning. I'm the big spoon. The cooler is the little spoon. Yeah. And I'm making mixed drinks the whole time. So by the time we get there, we're trash. She's not. She's driving. But everybody else is trashed, obliterated. And I was like, well, I'm not leaving this in the car. So I had a backpack, and I filled up two jugs. One of them was straight-up vodka. One of them with, was it like vodka and wine punch? It was like punch. a mixed drink or something. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So, uh, so we're obliterated, and I'm walking around New York City with our friends and stuff, and I'm like squirting shots into strangers' mouths, like, like yeah, whoa, like I'm so into it. Yeah, I'm talking to everybody. I'm so drunk. I'm talking to everybody, and uh, I even I remember there was like some teenagers who I heard making like a homophobic comment, and I spent 20 minutes lecturing them and trying to get them to see the, to see the other side. Also, so where did things go south according to you? Since you might remember better. Yeah, I was sober. <laughs> So you remember that good. Uh, yeah. So you were so, you know, the parade is going by. It was like the African section. So you've got like people in these like African like costumes and feathers and all this stuff and whatever. And so you handed out, like one came up by, like close by the curb where we were. And so you were like, here, take a drink, take a shot. And you handed off the thermos to them of vodka. And, like, I mean, this was like still like yeah. half full. And so they went off with it. You were like, no, no, I need that back. So you now jump into the parade and you are following them to try and get the vodka back. And everybody's wearing feathers. Yes. Everyone is dressed up in these, like, Because it's like tribal. Yes, yes. So after that, like, you were gone and I was like, okay, like, I mean, I was assuming you were coming back and and you didn't. (laughs) So I don't know what happened from that point on. Well, on my end, uh, so the guy takes it and I'm like, hell no, that's my vodka. So I jump into the parade to try and get it from him. But then within like two seconds, I realize that they're all in these costumes. I don't know which one it was. Right. I've, like, I have no idea which one it was. Cause I had to run down. I ran down first, then jumped over. Oh, gotcha. So this guy is like, um, I, I realize that like I'm in the parade now. Now keep in mind, they're all in feathers and like African tribal stuff. I'm like not. I have eyeballs yeah, no. glued to my head. Yeah, like googly eyes. The googly eyes that jiggle. So like everybody be like, oh, I like your eyes, and I'd be like, 
like to show them how it jiggles because they, they were glued to my head. So literally I'm walking around looking at people like, yeah. Um, and I had bubbles and I would keep blowing them at people like, do you like balloons? They're like, those aren't balloons, those are bubbles. But I'm like, same thing. But I was that drunk. Yeah. So basically, uh, I'm now in the parade and I realize like, oh, I better try and blend in. Everybody's dancing and doing stuff. So I'm like, <laughs> like trying to blend in. Like, oh, now I look like I'm in African gear. Now I look like I'm in feathers. Now right. that I'm doing that. So basically, within like a minute, I forget about the vodka. I forget about everything really. And I'm just having fun in the parade. And I'm interacting with people on the sidelines, and they're all cheering for me as I go by, probably because they realize what a drunk yeah, mess I was. probably realize you're not part of that section of the parade. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure they realized I was just some <laughs> drunk guy who jumped in. And it was pretty obvious I was not part of any I'm of it. I'm surprised no one caught on to that and really kind of like made you come out of the parade. Why did anybody escort me out? I don't know. I mean, I'm a big guy. Maybe I was intimidating. I'm like six foot three, 300 something pounds. Like, but seriously, somebody should have escorted me out of that damn parade. Yeah, thinking about it now. Yeah. So, all I remember is at one point, I saw this lady um, who was in a wheelchair. And you could tell that she was on her way out. Like, she was close to passing away. Like, you could just tell. Um, it looked like it was that she had, like, very advanced cancer. And she was with um, another woman who I, I assumed was her wife. You know what? You could tell they were lesbians, so I assumed it was her wife, but it, it might not have been. And um, in my head, right away, I was like, oh no, like, everybody's enjoying the parade, and she's stuck in this chair, and nobody's talking to her. And so I got down, like, I got down on my knees, and I was, like, in front of her, and I took her hands. And I'm so drunk, guys, and I'm an emotional person. Oh, yes. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're so beautiful, and... You know, I hope you're having so much fun. And, like, we end up literally, the three of us, sitting there crying together. Like, I'm drunk on my ass just sitting there crying with these two ladies. So, eventually, I realize, like, the end of the parade is coming. So, I'm like, oh, I better go. And so, I went with the, now the African part is way gone. I'm at the end of the parade. And I walk with them until the parade ends. So, when it ends, all of a sudden, everybody's kind of just dividing up and doing their own thing. And I look around, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Where's, her, where's all my friends? Where's my wife? Or her girlfriend at the time? And I realized, like, I'm lost. Yeah. So, um, I, I want... The parade ended kind of near this, um, like, park. And there's, like, a guy playing a piano. So if any of you are in New York City, you might not know what I'm talking about. There's, like, a guy on a grand piano playing music. And I remember I was like, well, I'll just wait here. I'm sure they'll come. So I'm, like, trying to lean on a wall. But I'm so drunk, I can't even lean on a wall. I'm falling off of a wall. So then I go to sit on this bench. And I, somebody is sitting there. And I, like, I'm so drunk. I look over. I'm like, are you lost? And they're like, no. Are you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm lost, so I live here now. And uh, that's really where my mind went. I was just, I knew that, like, well, if I'm lost, I live here now. So I just have to ex accept the fact that I'm a homeless person in New York City. And I accepted it. I just felt like they're never going to find me. Like, I live here now. So um, it's all very blurry. But I do remember going up to this book stand where somebody was selling books. And I was, like, trying to, like, talk to people who did not want to talk to the big drunk guy with googly eyes on his face. And I'm like, did you ever read this? And they're just ignoring me. And I'm like, I'm like is this book good? And they're just ignoring me. And um, so, like, and I remember talking to a lady at CVS for a while. <laughs> like, a cashier at CVS. And she was like, well, I'm like, can you call my friends? And she's like, what's the number? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, well, then I can't call them. <laughs> You know, it's just craziness. Um, and then uh, I walked around for a while, um, and I couldn't find them. I mean, it had to be hours. I mean, like Over a few two hours. or three, like a few hours. Yeah. And of course, now I'm back with our friends who, like, the, me and one other person were probably the only like sober ones. Okay, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, I don't know where he went. He doesn't have his phone. We have all of his stuff except for his wallet. I mean, thank God he had his ID and stuff. Not that it helped. Not that it helped, no. <laughs> but at least I can so, remember who the hell I was, because I was that well, Yeah, and so we had, like, talked to somebody, and they were like, well, you need to just stay in the central it area. Somebody was a cop. Yeah, it was. For a 
sister went up to the cops and she was like, there's a guy with googly eyes on his face and a, ba- and a, and a bandana. And he, he wandered yeah. off like in the parade and got lost and we don't know where he is. We can't contact him. So they're like, well, the best bet you need to do is just stay in your local set, like area where you were for the parade. And, you know, he might make his way back and like recognize something from there, that area. We were like standing on like a corner by a bank. So we were like, okay, so like we're trying to go up and down the street looking around. So I'm like, well, we're going to have to just stay here. I'm going to have to just have faith that he's going to find his way back. So like I'm freaking out. I'm like, you know, it's starting to get dark. I'm like worried that, you know, I can't leave him in New York City. Like, oh my gosh, like I was panicking. But I wasn't looking for you guys anymore. Yeah, I'm sure you were. (laughs) Because I had decided that I lived there now. I gave up. Like I, I thought like it's New York City. I've seen Home Alone. I know how it goes. Yeah, okay. For well. me, for me, I just felt like I, I was not looking. I live there now. I was, like, trying to pick out a corner. Oh, my God. I was trying to, like, find, like, where do I find boxes around here for my house? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Um, That's awful. Yeah, no, I just, and the sad part is, I probably knew your number by heart if I just sobered up. Like, yeah. But, yeah, so, um, so it was a while, and we're just kind of waiting there, and I'm just like, well, I mean, like, like, New York City, obviously, is freaking huge, like, and I'm sitting here like, oh my god, this is literally, like, one of the worst case scenarios, because, like, how do you even begin to look for him? Like, I don't know what direction he went in, and it just, it was awful. So we stood there for a while, and we waited, and we waited, and we just, like, looked around, and, like, you know, was, we did what we were told to do, and next thing I see is I see him across the street (laughs) down the road and I see him walking back towards us and I'm like oh my god like like, there he is there he is how can I miss him he's got a bandana on with these googly eyes all over the place and I remembered what shirt he was wearing and so I like saw him and I was like yelling for him like we were all waving like we're over here we're over here and so like we literally like started running at each other across the street it was like a movie yes literally like a movie in American (laughs) Tale when Five-O finds his family yes it It was Papa (laughs) Five-O Papa Five-O Papa it was that yeah and so like dramatic hysterical crying both hysterical crying because I'm like oh my god like I didn't think I'd ever see you again I am like, how am I going to tell my friends that I just made here that I'm moving out of New York City? (laughs) (laughs) I just moved here, and I have to move out already a few hours later. Like, Uh, um, well, not for nothing, but our child was upstate, and I can't be like, oh, by the way, I lost your daddy in New York City. I'm sorry. And you were pretty close to that. Yeah, I was petrified, and I was like, oh my gosh, but I was so mad at the same time. Like, why would you do that? Like, oh my god, but so many emotions. I never even got my vodka back. Yeah, no, and not that I needed like, another sip. No, absolutely but not. Still. No, 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 no. So yeah, so that was a pretty, pretty interesting and stressful. It was one of the most intense moments of my life. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And I don't know if we could really give it justice of how... I mean, we're talking crazy busy. Oh, yeah. Cri- the thousands were, the of people. The were insane. Probably hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, but and not just like in like, like an area. Yeah. The entire city, from as far as I could see, was yeah. just so busy. Yeah. Oh, it was it was great. Yeah. But in some weird way, just like every other drunk debacle that you would be in, it like even though the more tragic it is in the moment, the better story it is for like the next day or for YouTube uh, a bunch of years yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. Good times, good times, good times. Oh yeah, for you. <laughs> oh, and then when we get there, my one of my best friends, he ended up going to a gay club and hanging yeah. out instead oh, of yeah. looking for me. Completely so then I'm like, us. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm sitting there like, how could you do this to me? You didn't look for me. You're supposed to be my friend. And it was like a big, and I'm still drunk, so it was like a big dramatized ordeal. Yeah, yeah. the drive home wasn't fun. No. That was a hot mess. Yes, it was. All of it. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, we definitely recommend <laughs> that you go to Pride Parade in New York City. Get completely drunk. No, uh, don't get then completely drunk. And then make sure you have a bottle that you're going around getting everybody in New York City drunk with. Because I'm pretty sure I got like 
40 people drunk that day because I was walking around. Like, you were not. You didn't have that much fun. I God. know. Oh, I'm my sorry. goodness. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to end this on a boring note. I bet you guys want to see pictures, don't you? I bet you guys want to, I bet you want to see pictures. Well, guess what? <laughs> We've got some pictures here for you. Um, in some of these pictures, you're going to see our dear friend, Samantha, who was at New York City Pride with us the first time. And the second time. And the second time. Uh, since then, she's unfortunately passed away. So uh, this one is for you, Samantha. Rest peacefully, and we love you. And to everybody else, thank you for tuning in. So subscribe and leave a comment below. And we'll see you next Saturday for our Storytime Saturdays. Happy Pride, everybody.